Hello everyone, welcome back. Um, we're here for our next session, uh, which is a success story of Sharuk Partners. Um, I'm uh, super, super uh, excited about it and curious to hear. Um, I would like to remind you that um, wherever you're tuning in, uh, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube or LinkedIn, you can always send us your questions. Um, and um, yeah, our wonderful guests will try to answer them. Um, so we'll have Shireen Abdelbaki um, going into conversation with Tamer Azer and Sidiq Farid. Um, I'll uh, leave it up to them to, to tell them who they are. Um, I think it's part of the story. So um, yes, without further ado, enjoy. Thank you, Amber. So we're live. Uh, I'm really honored to be moderating this session tonight, uh, Investment uh, Success Stories. And then we have with us tonight uh, Shuruk Partners, uh, represented by Tamer Azer, partner in Egypt. And uh, one of their success stories, uh, Smart Crowd, Sadiq Farid. And uh, yeah, let's get started. Hi, Tamer. Hi, Sadiq. Hey, Shadeen. Hey, Shadeen. So it's really, really a pleasure and an honor to be having Tamer Azer with us here on this panel, uh, representing Sharuk Partners, a leading tech investor in emerging markets um, with 39 companies and five exits and uh, managing a portfolio of uh, over 100 million uh, US. And um, that's so exciting. So my first question to you before we even get started, what is the exciting moment for you? Thank you, Shireen. Um, I think we get really excited when we when we meet um, founders who share a similar vision to us, who um, really believe in what they're doing. It doesn't at some point it doesn't really matter what they're up to as long as um, they're sort of they have the right mindset for solving problems. Uh, and then when you find that connection um, as an investor with a founder and the founder finds it with you, it's it's, it's a very exciting moment. And then everything else kind of you figure it out later. So uh, it's always exciting meeting people like Sadiq and then finding that sort of commonality and finding that sort of um, uh, common ground that we can we can use to do something meaningful together. That's That's an amazing answer, especially that um, your slogan or company motto is uh, as company builders and value investors. So I'm sure you found a lot of value in connecting with uh, a smart crowd. And so um, let's let's say uh, hello to Sadiq Farid uh, of, of Smart Crowd. Um, how are you? Good I'm doing well. Good evening. Pleasure to be here. Thanks for inviting me. Why 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 would it why would I want to invest through Smart Crowd? Oh, <laughs> um, in the business or on the platform? <laughs> on the platform. Let's let's take it from that perspective first. Sure. Yeah. So just to give a bit of background and what Smart Crowd is, Smart Crowd is a digital real estate investment platform where we fractionalize real estate, enabling masses to access this great asset class uh, that has historically been very difficult for many to participate in due to large capital requirements. So we make it very easy, hassle-free from the convenience of your device to invest as little as $100 and own a piece of property and generate returns from it. So uh, that's in a nutshell what Smart Crowd does and why would one should invest on Smart Crowd platform. It's very simple. You know, Everyone should have a well-diversified investment portfolio. That's how the wealthy sort of preserve and accumulate their capital over time, where you know almost 30, 40% of their wealth is tied up in alternative investments like private real estate. An average person does not have that capability to do so because they don't have large amounts of money. For many, it becomes a very concentrated part of their portfolio owning a home, or worse, it becomes a very leveraged uh, investment, uh, which is also financially not very prudent. By fractionalizing it, what it does is even with someone with $10,000 or $50,000 investable capital can have appropriate allocation into real estate such as investing 10, 20% of their investable capital into real estate through a platform like Smart Crowd, leaving enough capital to continue investing in other asset classes such as stocks and bonds and build a well-diversified portfolio that stand, can test, stand through test of times. There's empirical evidence that demonstrates people that have alternate investments in their portfolio 
are able to generate better returns vis-a-vis -vis the risk in the overall portfolio. So that's the reason you should invest in a smart crowd platform. So, so T Tamer, um, I, you already said that what excites you about new companies, uh, the management and their, their values and, and then what they're going to do with it. So what, what can you tell us more about your experience with smart crowd and, and um, how, how can it expand also beyond the, the area that they're in already? So, so smart crowd is in a very interesting space for me because I grew up in a country where most people had very limited um, options to invest their money, right? Real estate was very, very expensive. So you only had the opportunity to invest your money in these guaranteed investment certificates that were offered by uh, publicly owned banks or government owned banks, right? You get really high interest. That was it. That's all the only option, uh, the only option you had. And then you see companies like smart crowd giving people specifically young people uh, access to alternative investment assets is a really really interesting opportunity uh, to start breaking into the property market for young people in a different way sort of so being able to capitalize um, on a booming market without having to expend uh, the exorbitant amounts of money required for you to enter the property market or <clears throat> Uh, for you to be leveraged, as Sadiq said, right? So this is a very, very unique opportunity to give people access to things they never had access to before, which is something that I really, really enjoy, is you were creating a new market, right? You're almost creating a new market. You're creating a new opportunity that didn't exist previously, which is very different than sort of creating um, a platform that facilitates something or makes something easier. This creates a fundamentally new sort of um, way of, of investing. It's, it's something super innovative that opens up opportunities for a lot of young people. How, how are people, how is my money safe with smart crowd tenure? I mean, Sadiq would probably be the best guy to answer that question. Sure. Yeah. So we're financially regulated. So that gives you a little bit more comfort and trust level. Second, you're investing in an asset, right? So your, your investment is backed by an asset. Um, and, and our platform is very transparent, so you know exactly where your money is going and how you're making a return, um, which makes it very consistent with Sharia principles, even though we don't market ourselves as Sharia compliant platform and so forth. But you have very, very clear distinction as to where your money is going and how the returns are coming. To give you an example, you know, on our platform, you get to decide where you're in, uh, allocating your capital. So you can pick a property and know specifically where your money is going into which property and what are the return. Uh, dynamics of that property. We have full paper paper trail in terms of your legal uh, ownership. Um, and that's very unique in our platform where it gives you direct ownership, full legal recourse of your ownership uh, for that fractional element of that property that you own. So that makes it very, very safe. And we deal with various stakeholders. So we have the, the financial regulator as well as the local land department, um, two, two government entities, stakeholders, that have uh, full uh, visibility on the ownership. For example, if you were to invest in a property, that information is registered with two separate entities, government entities, ensuring full protection um, uh, for your investment. And the beauty of this, uh, the, the thing is Smart Crowd. Smart Crowd is just a platform that enables this. We have zero ownership in that property. So you have zero exposure to the platform. So even if the platform, for whatever reason, stops operating, everything is completely ring fenced giving you even further protection um, from it and only exposing you to real estate risk and none of the operational risk of the platform. And is it easy to, um, is mobility easy? Is it easy to move your funds around, uh, make changes on the time? Yeah, so uh, it's very extremely easy for you to uh, invest on the platform. It's simple, five clicks, and you can become a property owner and start building your real estate portfolio without having millions of dollars. Um, uh, we provide exit options. You have two exit options. One is a collective exit with everybody. You sell the property and everybody gets their capital back along with any capital returns, uh, capital gains or capital losses. And the second option is in the secondary market on our platform. You can sell your shares to someone else. So if you have shares, you want to sell it to Tomer, you can do so on the platform and, and so forth. And that depends on the liquidity on the platform at any given point in time. That's so dynamic. The returns, Super yeah, the, 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 so we get regular... We provide regular returns. Uh, what we don't, the property does. We rent it out on a monthly basis. You get your returns. They're deposited into your digital wallet. You choose to reinvest that money, compound your investment, or you can withdraw that money, uh, whatever you want to do with your money. So you have full control on it. 
so um, so Tamir, so with the five clicks, I'm sure it wasn't as easy to start. Uh, I'm sure there were challenges. But before I get to that question, so so I can use that money and invest in N NFTs. <laughs> so NFTs are going to come. Um, there's lots of rules and so we're fully regulated, financially regulated, mm -hmm. right? And there's still a lot of ambiguity around regulations around NFT tokens, security tokens, utility tokens. But that's sort of phase, that's Web.3.0, right? So we're on Web.2.0 at the moment, and we're working on our way towards Web.3.0. Uh, as the regulations are evolving, we, we, we always tend to be stay ahead of the game in the sense that, you know, smart card was the first of its kind in the entire region. Everything we've done is the first of its kind. Uh, there was no framework two years ago when we started this. Um, we took a leap of faith because we thought we were creating a lot of value and we'll be able to convince the stakeholders. And we have been able to do that. Um, and now we're working sort of on the... 3.0 version of this where a lot of work is happening in the background and 2022 is going to be a very exciting year for us where we're going to start incorporating a lot of emerging technologies uh, part of our uh, platform nfts could be one of those uh, elements as well too but it all depends and dedicated um, dictated based on what happens in the regulatory front as well too for sure so coming back to you tamir uh, how do you see the um, not scalability, but the expansion of uh, such a platform and services in the region. I mean, I think there's tremendous opportunity in this space across different asset classes. Um, young people want to invest more of their money. They're looking for more options. They're looking for more opportunities. And that's why some of our portfolio companies who are sort of targeting futures for uh, and investments for young people have been doing well, like Sarwa is specifically also smart crowd, giving young people access to financial services and access to investment opportunities is quite interesting. And as Sadiq mentioned, Web3 will open up a tremendous amount of opportunities uh, for companies that already work with the collective, already work with the crowd. You know, when, when this whole thing, when people thought about collective ownership in the beginning of ownership, it was cooperatives, you know, and now we're thinking about different sort of structures where people can own fractional properties and fractional ownership of all sorts of things. And then the next thing will be sort of Web3, where you're getting democratized sort of autonomous organizations that are owned by people, that manage by people, that invest for people. And then you're just like, OK, well, this is a really, really cool opportunity. Fantastic. And what, what would you highlight or underline as were the challenges in the beginning? I mean, in the, in the beginning, I mean, uh, regulatory, as Sadiq mentioned, regulatory structures didn't exist, right? So when you're an investor and you're looking at an opportunity and you're like, okay, well, this is pretty groundbreaking. This is really cool. This is something that could go lots of interesting places. The first question you ask is, what about the regulation? Can you actually do what you're saying you're going to do, right? Uh, and then uh, it's always a challenge, right? It's always tough. Sometimes in some areas, you you really do have to do the famous thing where you sort of execute and ask for permission, right? Or, or uh, you don't ask for permission, you ask for forgiveness. And then in other instances, you, you're pretty sure should ask for permission first, right? Uh, mm -hmm. But in this instance, it was it was good to to ask for forgiveness later. Frameworks kind of um, were, were put in place and, and Smart Crowd did a fantastic job capitalizing on that opportunity. So coming back to my previous question again about expansion in the region, um, do you have certain geographic spots, uh, locations that you have in mind or look into or how, how is it going to come up about in your opinion? Yeah, so, so we look at our business from two fronts, supply and demand side, right? Supply is the real estate opportunities that we present on the platform, and demand side is the people that are actually putting money, funds onto the platform. So, you know, we focus very much on the demand side, and our demand side is Egypt to Bangladesh. That's our target market, right? Because we see a lot of um, uh, uh, big opportunity in this space, right? Younger demographics, growing middle, uh, middle class population, uh, high connectivity uh, of smartphones. Um, and culturally speaking, uh, a preference of investing in hard assets. So we want to be the go-to platform for anything that's alternative investments in this market. So our focus is very much in this market, and we are already looking to expand into these in the core market. So you know, we start off our operations here in UAE. Um, we're looking to enter uh, Pakistan and um, Saudi next year, and uh, and eyeing um, Egypt uh, sometime end of next year or sometime in 2023. It might get uh, expedited depending on how things play out. Um, but we're a small team. We don't want to spare ourselves too thin. 
Um, but those are the, those are the markets that we're pretty much focusing on as the core market. Even though we're based in UAE, 15% of our uh, user base is already non-UAE resident. We have a lot of people from the region investing on our platform from other GCC uh, countries. But we also have people from all the way as far as Auckland, New Zealand, using our platform to invest in Dubai. Right? That, that's, that's just amazing. You just think about that. Someone sitting in New Zealand, never traveled to Dubai, using his phone, and he's built a portfolio in Dubai, giving him a good 6 7% return yield, which he would never phantom of getting in his own country. And we have people from India doing the same thing. We have people from the UK. We have a retired person in Italy using our platform to build a real estate portfolio here in Dubai. That's the power of a digital platform. It's truly borderless. So when you ask me about scale, you know, the world is our oyster. I just get excited talking about it. So, you know, keep me in check. <laughs> yeah. Thank, thank God for internet and mobile phones. So um, when we, we're looking forward to you coming to Egypt next. Don't wait too long. We will be there soon. <laughs> I just wanted to remind our audience uh, tuning in with us tonight, if you have questions to our speakers on the panel, please uh, just you know send them in and uh, we'll be happy to uh, um, share and discuss them. So um, coming back to you, uh, Temer Azer of uh, Shuru Partners, we're very happy that you're um, showcasing uh, Smart Crowd. And, um, but I want to know more and pick your brain a bit about your experience. You said, you know, sometimes you look for when you have a, a hot investment, you look for the regulation first, but sometimes you wait for that and it comes uh, naturally later. Um, what other... Um, you know the word challenges, but what other questions or what other um, points of advice would you like to share about your experience with Smart Crowd to the audience and um, startups in general? And you know, we have a lot of different people in the audience tonight, so we'd like to have more about your experience. Yeah, I, I think um, I, I, every opportunity is different, right? Uh, every opportunity is different when you when you're when you're looking at when you're looking at opportunities or you're looking at sort of companies and founders, it's um, as I grow older and as I do more and more investments, I realize that it's not, it's not really um, a constant, right? Every, every opportunity and every conversation has lots of moving pieces, lots of, and every opportunity has a compromise, right? The catch is to understand what that compromise is very early on and know that you are solving for it. Right. So when we're when you're when you're looking at innovative sort of ahead of their time kind of opportunities like smart crowd, you're solving for a problem that a lot of people don't really sort of see and haven't built for a regulatory framework for. Right. So we know that that's what we're going to solve for. That's the risk we're taking together. Right. So we know that that's what we're backing and that's what we're investing for, that this we are betting that this will this will be solved and that this will not be an issue, right? So in every opportunity, you have to know what is the thing that you are sort of, what is your key critical risk that you are investing for, right? If you're investing in um, sort of a, an AI that will deliver on a speech to speech conversation like Siri, that's what your compromise is, is that can that AI read, understand and respond, right? So every time you take a leap of faith, you're taking a leap of faith and there's usually like a really critical point that you're trying to solve for once you know what that is you understand the level of risk that you're taking right and when you understand the level of risk that you're taking then you can make informed decisions based on everything else so that's usually the first question i try to answer and then i start sort of thinking with the founder about it how it's going to play out and that sort of that's the seed where the conversation starts and grows and that's how we eventually find the common ground to invest and the common ground to work together. So I guess for each case, it's a different, um, of course, it's a different story, but also a different type of or requirement of research involved, investigation, of different course. path, and especially if it's a groundbreaking uh, new, uh, then you're, mm -hmm. you're doing it yeah. all from the, from scratch anyway. And it's all about the relationship, right? Like maybe Sadiq can pitch in and tell us a little bit more about his perspective. He must have talked to a lot of investors, right? It's important to find that relationship 
sort of connection and link. And I think that sort of creates the foundation, which everything then becomes a conversation and a give and take until you find the right sort of formula. Yeah, no, I would echo that, right? Especially if you look at Sharuk Partners, for example, right? At the stage that they invest in, um, early stage, seed, pre-seed, series A, at that point, there's lots of question marks uh, around business, business model, and so forth. So Tom is very right. Uh, it comes down to personal relationship. Are these the right people to back? Are they the ones that are going to crack it? Uh, are they fully committed? Are they doing it for the right reasons? Do they have the right mentality around it? Because, you know, uh, when you're doing something new, innovative, um, uh, in the sense that it hasn't been done in the region, there's no framework and so forth. There's no blueprint. Right, there isn't a process where hey, listen, these people have done it in X, Y, Z. Let me copy paste it over here and make it work. It, it, it's very difficult. There's very unknowns. When we started, and in Shuruk, where uh, you know they backed us very, very early on, even before we had our uh, testing license, for example. Um, you know, it was at that time it was more so what we were passionate about, what we see, what we, what we saw as an opportunity, and we presented. And and Shuruk believed that you know we were the right team to 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 back that these guys are the ones that are gonna figure this out because you know they truly believe in the value that they're about to create. Um, and and it's, 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 it's challenging in many ways, right? Because, you know, uh, being the first ones, it's, it's a, there's lots of pros and cons into that, right? Because yeah, you're being the first one to do it, but you're also setting um, a pathway for others to follow and replicate what you've done and do it in a shorter period of time, et cetera, because you've already paved the way. Uh, for other people to do, but the amount of learnings that come out of it and the credibility you build in doing so is also quite uh, quite valuable. And early on, it's all about those those kinds of uh, personal relationship um, and that kind of belief factor um, to 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 make it happen. No, exactly. Back, as, back as by, as much as go sorry. ahead. Can I keep going? No. no it's a matter of uh, you know the, those relationship, but it has to be backed by fundamental uh, uh, research and data behind it. Yes, there's an opportunity to, to do so, and if you're able to crack it, you have a big opportunity that you can take advantage of. And one thing you can't control is the timing of these things, right? Because especially when you you know we were, we were because we were dealing with people's hard and money, uh, it was very important for us to ask for permission first, and then rather than ask for forgiveness later. Um, because, you know, when it comes to people's money, you don't get many chances of building that trust. Um, so, uh, and, you know, when we first started, I'll give you an example, right? Um, this is back in 2018, right? I'm embarrassed to say how small our seed round was compared to what the market is now. But, you know, you, you as an ambitious, uh, optimistic entrepreneur think you're going to take over the world. In six months, you'll have your license. And you know, smart card is going to be this massive. And then six months later, you're still scratching your head with the regulators. I'm like, hold on, where's my license, man? Can we get going on this, right? Because not everybody moves at your pace, etc. So you don't. And those are things out of your control. There's certain things that are within your control that you can control and make a success out of it. There's certain things that are out of your control. And it's very important. And my advice to other entrepreneurs that are listening to this, other people that are inspiring to be entrepreneurs, is always, always, always be prepared for the worst, right? Hope for the best, but prepare for the worst because. You, there's certain things that are out of your control. Um, and that, that, brings, that, that, brings me, that brings me to this question because as optimistic as I like to be and I'm known to be a, a, a positivity person, there must have been one point where you found it extreme, most difficult. The most difficult point for you where you decided you were almost going to decide I can't go on, but I have to go on. What's that point? Yeah, alhamdulillah, I haven't, I haven't, I haven't felt that moment yet. Right. That's so fantastic. I haven't had a moment yet. Obviously, awesome. listen, you, you know, in a, in a startup world, there's lots of ups and downs, right? There's days yeah. when you're about nine, you want to get on top of Burj Khalifa and yell to the world. And there's days you want to go under a, uh, under a rock and sort of hide yourself or cry yourself to sleep. But that doesn't mean that you're going to you're, you're giving up and so forth. Alhamdulillah, we haven't we haven't come across. There's been a lot of challenges, of course. Right. Building a business, a unique business, of first of its kind, it's not easy. Right. Um, it, it takes a lot of courage, uh, it takes a lot of luck, and a lot of hard work. Um, and there's a lot of elements that were lucky for us. But um, we haven't come across a point where like, oh my God, like, you know, we can't continue on anymore because the opportunity is massive, right? Like real estate in itself, you know, is the largest investable asset class in the world. We are, 
when we first started, we have a very long-term team that we're going after, right? And it's we're very, very, very early in that process, right? Because for many people, don't look at real estate as investment first, right? A lot of people think of real estate as a home they want to live in, and they look at it from that investment point of view. They don't look at real estate the same way they look at stocks or bonds or crypto, etc. They look at real estate as a very boring asset and so forth. But that will change as home ownership continues to deteriorate all over the world because of lack of affordability more renters in the market it's a very attractive investment product if you look at all the smart money big asset managers in the world they've been buying up family homes by the droves over the last decade that hasn't come down to the retail level when that mindset changes guess what smart cars going to be there to take advantage of that opportunity so we're very very early in that thinking second financial literacy is also extremely at low levels right but that is changing people are taking more attention to basic human uh, financial like home economics to understand, um, to understand, uh, you know, the importance of saving, not only saving, but investing that money in a good manner. So when all that, all those stars align, platforms like ourselves will be the, uh, will be there to take reap rewards you'll, of that. You'll be ready. You'll be, you'll be ready to take on the storm. So you, you mentioned three critical uh, things: uh, courage, luck, and hard work. That's your formula. And so, so, so I, I preach three P's, right? I preach, I, I preach three P's of entrepreneurship, right? Uh, one is uh, 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 purpose. You need to know why you're doing what you're doing, right? Without that, it's all lost, right? You cannot measure success by money alone. So purpose is key. Passion is absolutely necessary for you to keep going because there are going to be a lot of uh, roadblocks and there's, you're going to get knocked down many times and you need to pick yourself up and passion ensures that you get yourself up. And keep going and the third and the most important one is patience Sabbath. it's the most important thing i can i guarantee you i'm a very patient person uh entrepreneurship cost me even more patience because like i said earlier there are a lot of things that are out of your control and if you don't have patience you're going to trip many times over so you need to have patience patience is key a lot of people especially in this in this instant gratification world that we live in Right, like even now, right? I would like to know how many people are watching this, what kind of feedback I'm getting, because we want instant gratification. But no, sub patience so, is very, very important. We're gonna sit in, uh, just three, fine in Cairo. Three, you have three P's for a, uh, for your prescription. What about yes. Shuruk Partners, uh, Temer? What is the formula for you in selecting and supporting uh, a startup? You said in the beginning, but yeah, you want to I mean, I, I have my own, uh, yeah, I have my own thing, right? I always look for people who work with intention. It doesn't necessarily mean sort of intentionality, um, because uh, I, uh, right? So people who do things with intention, right? So they're doing, they're not sort of just um, doing something and then being super reactive and no but i'm doing something I'm, i have a, it's the scientific method of approaching life right when i do something i have hypothesis and then i go out and i prove or disprove it right so you say okay i want to build this thing then i go out and i build it to see if i'm right or wrong and within every decision you're taking within the company every day you have a hypothesis, say, okay, if I increase, um, you know, if I increase my marketing spend and target this number of people, this is going to affect my company in this way. Not just saying, oh, I have to increase marketing to grow, right? So you, you come out, you make a hypothesis about what it is that you're doing, and then you're always trying to prove and disprove yourself right or wrong. And that's how you can continue to build and grow. Right. So intention is extremely, extremely important because it's the only real way to learn. Right. And if you don't learn, you don't acquire cumulative knowledge intentionally. You might acquire it slowly. It comes into your mind, but you don't actually know where it is or how to withdraw from the bank of knowledge. Right. But when you do it with intention, then you're like, OK, I learned that thing. I know exactly how to do it better next time. That's that's a critical point to people being able to scale companies is that they actually build the library, right? That has the repository of information that they've acquired over time. And that library continues to grow and they continue to build on it. That's the only real way to grow both as a human being, as a company, whatever it is, right? You just have an intention in everything that you do and you go out to prove it right or wrong. And then you learn from it and then you do another scientific experiment. That's how the scientific method works. That's super. 
I think we have a question coming in, uh, Tamir and Sadiq, uh, from uh, Mohammed. Um, let me, the question is to Sadiq, what did you learn from your users when it comes to investing in real estate projects? So from a user uh, perspective, some feedback. Yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting question, um, right? Uh, <laughs> you know, every, every user is quite different. Um, everyone invests for different reasons uh, with a different mindset. Um, but if I were to sum it down in terms of uh, what, what, you know, some of the learnings that we have had from our users, um, one is uh, people's, uh, I'm going to be very generic uh, in the sense that I don't want to, uh, you know, I hope my, my users don't get offended by this, but overall people have very limited understanding of risk versus reward. Um, and that's, that's a... Uh, it's, it's a big challenge uh, for platforms like ourselves to overcome, right? Because any investment platform, right? Because education is key um, because of lack of financial literacy. Because when we look at our product, any of our content, what we do, we never, never, ever try to sell smart crowd. We try to educate people to help them understand the importance of savings and investing. Once they understand that, the product in itself makes sense, right? Because it's so logical. It's like, okay, I know I now understand what's the importance of saving why I should be investing and how I should be investing. It was like, wow, a smart crowd is a no brainer, right? So that's our focus, but that's it's a, it's a slow burn, right? Because it takes long time to people to educate people, to get people to think about it. And that's what we found from our users. The ones that are educated, understand that, they're instant believers and they like, they love the platform and they're constant users, right? We have a massive, we have a very, very high reinvestment rate, 65% of user base. Uh, our multiple investors, um, average person has four investments on our platform and they continue to invest, right? These are the people that get it. People that don't get it, it's a long conversion cycle. It takes time, right? So, you know, if I were to say what I've learned from the investors, from the users, is understanding that risk reward, right? Because people look at um, superficial um, uh, KPIs or numbers, right? So, for example, uh, people tend to invest in the highest yielding asset automatically without understanding the risk and reward, right? So if I, if I if we present two opportunities on our platform, one is a 9% return and one is giving a 6% yield, people will just invest in 9% because they think that's better without understanding why something is 9% vis-a-vis why something is 6% return, right? It's no different than you investing in a, in a government back uh, safety uh, long-term deposit, what Tommy was talking about, or going and investing in Bitcoin. Yeah, Bitcoin is gonna give you a higher return vis-a-vis -vis that fixed income deposit, but the risk in that Bitcoin going to zero is a lot higher than the government back a, a, a note that's going to go to zero. So having that understanding, and I think that was the biggest rude awakening because I come from a finance background. I just think it's common sense. Everyone should know the risk versus reward, uh, but it'd be surprised how many people lack those fundamental knowledge. So that's one of the, one of the that was one of the key uh, findings uh, early on in, in our in our journey to and then that, that's allowed us to focus more on creating content to educate people and that in itself sells the product so you so you said already uh, it's five you're five clicks away from making a, a breakthrough uh, in a new uh, investment uh, field what, what are what are the essentials to get started on your platform just in case somebody's we're, not aware yet yeah, about it. We're, yeah we're regulated you can go onto our website smartcard.ae uh it's just like opening up a bank account you need to satisfy our kyc aml requirements uh which means you need to provide a proof of uh, identity and the proof of residence um once we have that depending on the information provided um you get approved and you get access to our marketplace and you can get started so proof of residence where you are, but not necessarily where you're incorporated, right? So, I mean, I can be investing in your, in the region where you are, but not necessarily living there. Like you said, Italy. Correct, and yeah. Canada so, and correct. Yeah. So you, you could be living anywhere as long as you're not living in a sanctioned country. Um, uh, it's, it's fine. And then obviously there's risk ratings for different countries. So depending on the country, the risk rating, we might need to do some enhanced due diligence. But that's very much risk-based uh, approach that we apply uh, based on your profession, et cetera, and so forth. So uh, it, it depends. But anyone from anywhere can use our platform, which is the case today as well, too. So I know you've, you've already um, been through a lot of the details about your uh, process. But um, let me ask you again, just to clarify, in case someone wasn't with us from the start of our talk, 
the, the areas or not the instruments, but the areas that you're investing in are um, varied or um, like if you choose a certain sector, you have to stick to that or you can mix and match or um, how does it work? Is it retail only? So at present, at present, we're only focusing on Dubai real estate, for example. Um, yeah, so with what in real estate? Yeah. So within Dubai real estate, so what we have on offer, you get to pick and decide where you want to invest and how much you want to invest. You can invest as little as 500 dirhams, approximately $100, $120 and change. Um, and we have different investment strategies or themes rather, right? So you will have a property um, in sort of a nice touristy area to operate as a holiday home. You can invest in that. You can invest in affordable areas in, in Dubai, which are more focused on long term. Um, we, we allow you to invest in other populous areas where there, we offer them as a service apartments. There's different strategies depending on your risk appetite and what kind of returns you're looking for. Are you more focused on income generation? Are you looking for more of a balance, whereas income and capital appreciation? Or are you just interested in investing in prime real estate where your focus is more on the capital appreciation rather than income? So you have that ability. We provide all the information um, a very, in a transparent manner on the platform and you get to decide where you want to do. And once you make that investment, then you know that asset, real estate is a long-term hold, right? So you have invested that money into that property over a long period of time to generate the returns uh, from that um, from that property. But given the fact that the minimum investment is very low, you have the ability to diversify and build a portfolio. So you don't have to constantly move things around uh, and so forth. So you can put 500 dirhams in one, a uh, thousand dirhams in another property, et cetera. And over time, build a portfolio, right? So the way you should look at it is like, listen, I want to allocate X amount of dollars in Dubai real estate over the next 12 months, right? And what is my strategy? And then based on that, you say you allocate your money accordingly as the opportunities come. And the beauty of it is when the returns start coming in, you can take those returns and reinvest on That's the platform. And, so and it's just, you also it's, have commercial, commercial spaces or... Uh... No, so in Dubai, we only focus on residential real estate at the moment because that's where there's a lot of liquidity in the market. It's a very fast moving product uh, and the returns are very attractive in the residential space vis-a-vis -vis the commercial space. So our focus is very much on the on the residential market in Dubai at the moment. Okay. So guys, uh, I, I think we've had a really fascinating discussion tonight, uh, shedding light on uh, one of the most uh, exciting uh, opportunities with Shuru Partners and Really, I'm sure a lot of people are going to be interested in your platform. Uh, we're running out of time, unfortunately, as uh, good times pass quickly. Uh, if uh, both of you would like to, you know, share any advice or tips or hints or your experience, what you'd like in the last few minutes before we uh, leave. Uh, sure, I would mostly encourage uh, any founders uh, who are watching um, to reach out to us, you can you can reach out to Shuruk uh, by via deals at shuruk uh, We're always always excited to hear from you guys. Uh, we're always interested uh, to learn what you're up to, and we do our best to be as engaged and as supportive as possible. So please do reach out to us uh, whenever you get a chance. Thank you, Tamir. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, listen. <laughs> I think I've said a few things uh, in this uh, in this talk. Um, feel free to reach out. Uh, happy to have any one-on-one -on -one conversation with anyone. But in general, for any any entrepreneurs there, inspiring entrepreneurs, like I said, you know, hope for the best, plan for the worst. Um, raise as much money as as possible as you can when you can. Um, uh, you can never have enough cash in the bank. It gives you a lot more leverage uh, and allows you to make mistakes. All the things that Tamir talked about, having that very scientific way of testing your hypothesis, you need to have money to be able to experiment those things till you get things right. And then you can sort of plow more money onto that. For you to be able to do that, you need to have you know, money in the bank to allow to do that. So you know, uh, uh, investors like Shuru Partners are very supportive of that. <laughs> so uh, you need supporters to back you to be able to, to, to find that fit to really scale your products and operations. So that's what I would uh, do. And don't forget the three P's of uh, entrepreneurship. You can perfect. hashtag it. Perfect. Become a, uh, I want this to go viral. I want this to go viral. <laughs> Thank you, Sadiq Farid of Smart Crowd. It was an amazing conversation with you and learning a lot about your services and instruments. And I'm um, looking forward to seeing you expand and uh, 
more areas of the region and uh, more sectors of the real estate market. And we're very happy to have had true partners and Conrad representing uh, uh, you. Um, amazing conversation. And thank you, Vested Summit, and the amazing team for bringing on um, exceptional uh, ideas and speakers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Amber. Jamie. Thank you, Sadiq. Thank you. Thank you very much, guys. Many thanks for this uh, very interesting session. Um, I've learned a lot about the uh, smart crowd. I also, um, while listening, uh, took a look at the website and it looks super welcoming. So um, yeah, uh, have a look too. Um, this was the last uh, session for me uh, to, to introduce um, or the next session uh, sounds like a lot of fun and MC introduce it to you in it um, it's about the future of means and how to monetize them so uh, that sounds super interesting uh, before I leave I'd like to remind you um, of about um, the discount for value that's um, um, a special discount for all who's watching um, of 20 percent um, and value for those who haven't heard yet it's a, um, a magazine a one-off uh, publication, actually an exploration of new economies. So I think it's very, um, uh, yeah, much aligned with with the topics that um, are discussed at this summit. Um, and there's also an article by uh, Melody um, about conscious tech, but there's much more. Um, you can also read about it at uh, companynewheroes.com. Um, <clears throat> For now, I wish you a lot of fun uh, with the rest of the day and I'll be back with you tomorrow. Many thanks. <laughs>